OpenAI's new advanced Sora model has just been leaked. A group of artists selected to red team and test the model are the ones who decided to leak it, claiming that OpenAI is using them for a form of art washing. We'll take a look at some of the clips people were able to generate before it got shut down, which were pretty incredible. Next, an AI-powered robot named Erbai managed to kidnap 12 other robots in a showroom in Shanghai, China. It did this by engaging in human-like conversations and persuading the other robots to come home with it. Obviously, it's in Chinese, but I used Eleven Labs to translate it, so now we can see exactly what they're saying. Lastly, Anthropic introduces the model context protocol, a groundbreaking method that enables AI systems to directly connect with various data sources and tools. This will pave the way for capable AI agents, allowing them to eventually have access to your entire computer. So the infamous and long-awaited OpenAI Sora was leaked to the public this week for about three hours before OpenAI managed to shut it down. As I mentioned earlier, this was done purposely by artists who got early access to test the model and they left an interesting message here explaining their reasoning. Dear corporate AI overlords, we received access to Sora with the promise to be early testers, red teamers, and creative partners. However, we believe instead we are being lured into art washing to tell the world that Sora is a useful tool for artists. Artists are not your unpaid R&D, we are not your free bug testers, PR puppets, training data, validation tokens. And further, we are releasing this tool to give everyone an opportunity to experiment with what approximately 300 artists were offered a free and unlimited access to this tool. We are not against the use of AI technology as a tool for the arts. If we were, we probably wouldn't have been invited to this program. What we don't agree with is how this artist program has been rolled out and how the tool is shaping up ahead of a possible public release. So I wouldn't say I necessarily agree with how these artists went about it with leaking the model and everything, but I definitely understand their perspective. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Now, getting into some of the actual clips that were generated by this model, we should expect these to be some of the best AI-generated clips out there, given how far ahead OpenAI was compared to everyone else in this area. As many of you remember, Sora was initially demoed back in February of this year, and at the time it was way more advanced than anything we'd ever seen. Although, according to this article from The Information published roughly two months ago, OpenAI decided to completely revamp Sora after receiving tons of negative feedback from early testers. So, the Sora Sora that we're seeing today, the Sora that was leaked by these early testers, is a completely revamped advanced Sora model. As you can see from the limited examples we have, they are very high quality, detailed, and realistic. Apparently, the time it took to generate these clips was also significantly faster. This is something a lot of early testers complain about with the previous Sora, it being way too slow to generate scenes and disrupting their workflow. Unfortunately though, once OpenAI got wind of this leak, they immediately shut down their early access program with select artists, and even started muting people who talked about it in their Discord. So this all points to there being a potential release soon of this new advanced Sora model. It's been almost a year now that we're waiting for it. Do you guys think we'll get it before the end of this year or more likely next year? Personally, I'm thinking there's no way we get it this year. Now, while we're on the topic of AI video generation, Runway introduces Frames, an image generation model offering unprecedented stylistic control. With Frames, you can begin to architect worlds that represent very specific points of view and aesthetic characteristics. Here's an example titled World 3204 1970s Album Art. As you can see, every generation fits that same style and vibe of 1970s album art, it does a really good job at capturing the essence of that world, so to speak. Here's another, World 4027, Japanese zine. These are magazine-style generations. The colors and just the way they look is maintained throughout every generation. I can see this being extremely useful for animators and even potentially video producers. Next, we have Luma AI's all-new Dream Machine. Along with the revamped UI, they announced Luma Photon, the most creative, intelligent, and fast image AI model. They claim it can generate high-resolution, highly detailed, and creative creatively composed images at 8 times the efficiency and speed of other comparable models. They also announced consistent characters, a new feature we've started to see in some of the other top-of-the-line video models. Along with this, they announced the ability to reference and remix anything, bringing even more creativity and control features to users. So these AI video models are starting to become kind of like an entire work suite, if that makes sense. I mean, we've reached a point where they can generate scenes almost indistinguishable from reality, and now they're focusing more on their user interface and making it actually useful to people. I think this is a good direction to take, there's clearly still a lot of improvement that can be made in the quality of the generations themselves, but if it doesn't make the user more efficient or creative, then those improvements are just wasted. Now, there was actually another leak from this week. Dambo Ren, the regional head of cloud AI customer engineering at Google Singapore, accidentally announced the release date of Gemini 2, stating that it's coming in the second week of December. He then quickly edited his posts, changing it to next release during December, but as you know, nothing on the internet can be truly deleted. So we might be getting Gemini 2 in the second week of December 
remember, this could also just be a tactic Google is using to try and throw off OpenAI. Who knows? In other news, Apple is readying a more conversational Siri in a bid to catch up in AI. It states here, the revamped Siri will rely on new Apple AI models to interact more like a human and handle tasks in a way that's closer to ChatGPT and Google's Gemini. It also will make expanded use of app intents, which allow for more precise control of third-party apps. And the software will be able to tap into features from Apple intelligence, such as the ability to write and summarize text. Apple is currently planning to release the new Siri to consumers as early as spring 2026, about a year and a half from now. So it looks like Apple is really taking their time with the whole AI thing, they've been super secretive with what they're working on, and have pushed back the release of several AI features. They clearly don't think these AI features are ready for public release just yet. Now, there was some more OpenAI news before we get into the robot kidnapping. OpenAI is considering taking on Google with their own browser, according to a report from the information. It states, ChatGPT creator OpenAI has recently considered developing a web browser that would combine with its chatbot and separately discussed or struck deals to power search features. The move could pit the Sam Altman-led company against Google, which commands the lion's share of the browser and search market. OpenAI has already entered the search market with SearchGPT. So OpenAI is clearly coming for Google, and even though they're a much smaller company, if Google doesn't adapt and innovate fast enough, they might slowly fall behind in this rapidly evolving AI race. Finally, it states, the information report, however, said OpenAI is not remotely close to launching a browser. So I guess we won't be seeing this anytime soon, but definitely something I'll be keeping you guys updated on if we get any new information. Now, let's take a look at this video that's been going pretty viral recently of a robot in China allegedly kidnapping other robots from a showroom. Once again, since it's in Chinese, I translated it with 11 labs to English, and you can kind of make out what they're saying more or less. Take a look. Thank you, everyone. So there was actually a comment here on the video that gives us a bit more insight into what was being said. It states, I speak Chinese, there is no kidnapping here. Urbai asks the others if they are done with their work. They say yes, so Urbai says, why don't you go home then? Other, I don't have a home. Urbai, come to my home with me then. Others, okay, and they follow. This is more a case of a robot just following blindly a stranger robot, lol. So based on the Eleven Labs dubbing and the engagement on this comment, it seems to make sense. Also, after digging a bit deeper, I found this from an article. It states, it was yet believed that such actions would be almost impossible for a robot, which actually initiated a conversation and abducted 12 large robots. However, the Hangzhou company later revealed that the incident was a test. The Hangzhou company, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, maintains that they contacted the Shanghai robot manufacturer and asked that they would allow the robots to be abducted, which they agreed. But beyond this agreement, nothing was reportedly staged. Urbai, who is AI-powered, was granted the command to convince the other robots to follow it, which they did, reported the Sun. So even though it was a test, the fact that these robots can literally talk to each other and even persuade each other is fascinating, but also kind of worrisome. I could definitely see this leading to some unforeseen consequences in the future. In other AI news, Google DeepMind and Stanford University published this paper titled Generative Agent Simulations of 1000 People. This paper is actually pretty insane. The implications of what they discovered are massive. I won't go into too much detail for time's sake, but essentially they developed an AI interviewer who interviewed 1000 random people for two hours, asking open-ended and non-specific questions. Then they took those interviews and paired them with an LLM using a novel architecture. This novel architecture feeds the model the entire interview transcript every single time it's queried and instructs it to imitate the person based on those interviews. So now you essentially have an AI version of the person who was interviewed or as they call it, a simulated agent. They then ask both the real person who was interviewed and the AI simulation of them the exact same series of questions and measure how accurately the AI can imitate the person's behavior. The results were truly astounding. The generative agents replicate participants' responses on the general social survey, 85% as accurately as participants replicate their own answers two weeks later, and perform comparably in predicting personality traits and outcomes in experimental replications. Now again, the implications of this are absolutely massive. They show that AI can mimic human behavior extremely well
well with only small amounts of data. You can imagine that an AI with access to a lot more data could perform even better. Also, the fact that you can literally create AI versions of people. So yeah, I'm actually going to be posting a full deep dive into this paper soon on my Patreon. They go into a lot more detail about their findings, which I found super interesting. So if you did as well, the link will be in the description if you want to check it out. In other news, Anthropic introduces MCP, or Model Context Protocol, an open standard we've been working on at Anthropic that solves a core challenge with LLM apps, connecting them to your data. No more building custom integrations for every data source, MCP provides one protocol to connect them all. So essentially what they've created here is the infrastructure for connecting AI systems to virtually anything on your computer. In this demo, they connect Claude directly to GitHub, and it's able to create a repository and make a PR or pull request. And he states, once the MCP was set up, building it took less than one hour. We're literally witnessing the beginning of AI agents. These AI systems are now able to control our computers and leverage our own personal data. The use cases this can potentially unlock are endless. In the long run, we may be able to automate basically any task that's done on a computer at a level far superior and more efficient than the average human. So the future is looking bright. In fact, according to Scale AI CEO Alexander Wang, who was also the youngest self-made billionaire ever at age 24, by the way, AI is entering into an innovation phase where reasoning and other breakthroughs will lead to super intelligence in six years or less. I like to sort of break down and to contextualize the modern era of AI into sort of three major phases. So the first phase uh, was research, which really was roughly 2012 until 2018. Um, so basically lasting, you know, going from uh, the first deep neural network, uh, Al uh, AlexNet, which was really trained to do basic image recognition. You know, this was the era when all AI could do was tell you if there were uh, cats in YouTube videos, and that was, you know, this incredibly powerful thing, all the way up until the first GPT model, so the transformer and, and the first uh, GPT model trained by Alec Bradford at OpenAI. That kicked off the next phase, scaling. So the first six years, 2012 to 2018, was sort of this research phase. Then 2018 to 2024, really up until today, is the scaling phase. You know, the amount of uh, resources going into these models grew more than 10,000 fold over this time period. Um, last year, or this year, I should say, something like $200 billion is aggregate going into training these models. And this has resulted in incredible advancements in performance. Um, you know, we've gone from GPT-1, which was nothing special, to uh, to O1, which is sort of PhD level in math and computer science. And then O1, I think, kicks off this new phase of, you know, we sort of think about as an innovation era, which is basically now until super intelligence. We'll see if that's six years or maybe even a bit less than that. Um, the hallmark, I think, here is that, you know, we're spending $200 billion on the models. We probably can't spend a lot more than that. You know, probably can't spend, you know, 200 trillion on the models. So uh, there's only limited amounts of scaling left in terms of orders of magnitude. And so we need corresponding uh, innovations to sort of uh, come alongside. Uh, definitely advanced reasoning and test time compute uh, is one of those. Uh, and we think there's probably a few more, handful of others that will get us you know, to super intelligence. So do you think this prediction is accurate? Will we reach ASI in six years or less? Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, shout out to this X account for the clip. I highly recommend you give them a follow. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.